to another episode of From the Shadows. And as always, guys, if you are enjoying the series, please do drop a big old like on the video. Now, in the last episode, we beat USBCO by four goals to nil and continued a fantastic run of wins that I genuinely don't know where it's come from. We've really hit the ground running since that horrible game against Strasbourg where everything just went wrong for us on the 12th of December. And we've gone unbeaten in 18 matches since then, which is phenomenal. Um, our only defeat in a competitive game since then was on penalties against the top flight club. I'm genuinely emphatically happy with that. Um, so we've got a few games to talk about today. Obviously, it's the last game of the season today. Um, we will be doing a little squad report. Now, those of you who haven't seen my videos before and have only started watching this series, basically at the end of each season, I generally go through the squad so you guys can have a look and see who's been going up in their stats and stuff like that so you can see who we've actually got and have a look at some of the stats of the players. That's generally something I like to do um, as well. Now, I have signed a new contract now. It's a two-year deal. I've negotiated my wage from... Because they wanted to offer me three grand a week, which is, I think, what must have been at the start. So I've negotiated that down to 800. Uh, that was the lowest it would let me go. So hopefully... I mean, I know it's not going to make much difference, but the fact is that's an extra £2,000 a week that the club are not spending on me. And that's 100 k a year um, over two years. It's a two-year deal this time, so that's pleasant. Um, the other thing is, I did ask for a new contract um, just after we'd done the last episode and the club said no so i was getting really worried that they were going to just basically sack me off at the end of the year but thankfully that hasn't happened and um, there's still no signs of us turning professional but i'm hoping that that's going to happen over the summer that, that's my hope anyway um but whether that happens or not uh we will find out in a sec so our first game after the result against usbco was a relatively straightforward but it was away from home against uh, la poisse of and it was just a stonkingly good performance from Richard Socrier. Um, he's not been a sort of main man for us at times this year, but he did step up here with his new contract and scored us a brace, which is a rare thing for him. Unfortunately, he did go off injured a few minutes later, which kind of sucked. But shit happens, and we managed to get away with another 2 nil victory. Nil being the key part of that. It was another clean sheet for us. Um, insane. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Eight. We've kept eight clean sheets in our last nine matches and only conceded one goal in nine games, which is insane. Next up, we had uh, the rearranged game against Freya San Rafael, and it was away from home again, so it was going to cause us some issues. And unfortunately, uh, we were not able to win here, and unfortunately, didn't keep a clean sheet either. It was a shame, really. We were given a penalty, and Luther dispatched it with all different flavours of plums. But, insta-highlight, Matthew Scarpelli up the other end, and it was one all. It was a shame, because DeMarcone has been superb. I think he has got his 20 clean sheets now. Uh, the laundry man is just, oh, what a player he is. Great possession in this game. I think we probably should have won it in the end, but we didn't, and it doesn't matter, because it, it was just a sort of grinding out the rest of the season, basically, just to get through a few matches. Next up, we had um, what would have been an important match, but was less so uh, against Amiens. And as you can see, a nil-nil draw. So another clean sheet, but I would have liked to have seen a little bit more from us in this one. It wasn't, I don't know, like... We ended up bringing a lot of players at half time because it wasn't working for us. And also, I just wanted to rest players. I don't want to get any injuries at this stage just because if we do get any serious injuries, it could really hamper our preseason. And I just can't be doing with that right now. I need to have a full strength team for the preseason available, basically. So, a bit of a shame uh, that we didn't get the win there either, considering it was a home game as well. Next up, though, we went away to Strasbourg. And, well, we did them, frankly. It was a bit of revenge after the poor result that we had against them at home. And we were deserving of the win. Hakim Jabali put us in front on 36 minutes. But that was not the end of it. Uh, oh no, Alassane Ndai equalised for him and I thought, oh, we conceded another goal, which was a bit shit. But then Mehdi Jean, he's my lover again and he put us 2-1 up here and then almost immediately, not quite into highlight, but almost, Ndai managed to level things up again. And once again, an away, not an away goal, a late goal from Rodrigo Bongongui. Fantastic stuff. I think that's the second one of those 90th minute goals he's got and yet another 90th minute winner for us. I don't know where we keep getting these results from, but we do keep getting them and it is marvellous to see. I don't know how many goals we've scored sort of in stoppage time, but I'm pretty certain it must have earned us at least 10 points, if not more, this season. So another fantastic result. And of course, um, the point uh, the win against Paiso V actually wrapped up the title for us. But, as you're about to see, things have gone very weirdly since then. Amiens have found their form again, sort of. Colmar have found their form again, and USBCO have fallen off the radar. They've lost a couple of really poor matches, and as a result, have slipped down to fourth. It's very, very strange up there. So at the moment, it looks like um, Amiens are actually going to be promoted in the end anyway, but it looks like Colmar might join them. Um, in fact, the only other team that can go up is USBCO. Uh, everything else is decided down the bottom. Dunkirk's little resurgence of form was not enough to keep them up, and unfortunately, they go down along with Colomers, Vendée Luchon, and... Um, Chambly. So that's a bit of a shame for them. But the team we're playing today, SAS Epinel, who were l bottom of this table for quite some time at the early stages of the season, um, 
we beat them 1-0 on the opening day and I'm hoping today we can put the hammer on them again only three defeats this season as well and that is a pleasing thing to be able to say my god is it pleasing so um, let's take a quick gander at the squad not much has really changed this month uh, top goal scorer is of course ex Shirgui and Sokria though with 18 apiece and if anything um, yeah, and also ex Shirgui's picked up an injury which is going to keep him out for today's game which is a shame because I would have liked to have seen him cap it off with a nice result but hey it's going to give a chance for someone one of the younger players to step in for him assists as well 18 of those Gamiat up there with nine. Player of the match, X Shergui, just dominating that. Uh, average rating, X Shergui, of course. Key aerial challenges, Puyo with 103 key passes, 149 for X Shergui. Ikebana is injured as well, which means we can't really have him step in. Um, he's done well in the games he's played for us, I must say. I'm impressed with him. Uh, key tackles, 18 for Libohi, and of course, 420 interceptions for Puyo. And some players sort of verging on some decent value now, which is not bad to see. Uh, as for, as you can see, clean sheets, 20 of them, which is just magnificent. Key passes, miles clear for Ekshergui there uh, games one of course that's dominant but look at that Johan and Villa has only been in the team with nine goals have been conceded uh, sorry you know what I mean Sokka has got decent shot ratio assists dominating there um, he's tied for fourth place uh, he's never going to catch up with Ndai though unfortunately the two goals that he conceded against us uh, scored against us have not exactly helped on that one um, the least goals conceded although Freyos's goalkeeper's done okay on that one key tackles We've not really had to because we've been so good going forward, basically. That seems to be the way that I'm thinking of it. Um, average rating, we've dominated that as well. So, let's jump into the match preview screen. We're playing against SAS Epinal. Um, there is a late kickoff against, between Istra and Amiens, which is interesting because Amiens need to... Well, I think they're pretty much up. Uh, it's the one game to keep an eye on. is the USBCO game and, of course, uh, the Colmar game against Bastia. Not easy ties for either of the two teams. In fact, if anything, I think Colmar are probably going to do it, which is a shame because... USBC were looking solid until they played us. We seem to really ruin them, basically. And obviously, the ex shirt with out. I don't know if a Pereira will. Oh, dear. Surely we've got someone else. Wazine. I'm sorry. I'm putting Wazine instead of Pereira. Uh, Pereira can come on the bench, but for me, he's just not good enough just yet. Uh, we'll bring him on for... Actually, we're going to leave Bogongui on the bench because he's quite useful. I've brought him on a few times as a striking substitute. Um, and that seems to be his best... Not his best role, but since we can't use him as a right winger, he's been very good there. You might notice we've got a few poor morale players. Those are players that I just want to get rid of and I've just not been able to at the moment. Um, despite all the good morale, the squad harmony is still really low just because of all these stupid players that keep coming to me. They're backups. To, uh, again, I've had the same crap as literally over and over again, about 40 times I've had to deal with players. My inbox is just full of, would like to discuss leaving to get first team football. Or wants to get more first team football. What? What is? The, I don't understand why squad statuses even exist on this game because it, they mean nothing. You, if anything, if you set them with a lower squad status, they ask for more first team football. It's just pointless. Um, also, I've had you know I, my managerial stats are practically maxed out in the mentals, and you still get it constantly, and you can never do anything about it. So I really don't see what that just seems to be completely broken now, which is a shame. Um, but hopefully they'll fix that for next year's game. I, I, they don't expect anger, um, right? Sonia, yeah, he's going to be off as well in the summer. Um, Tangu, he's complained a little bit, but not by much. You know, he's not even played that much. He's made seventeen substitute appearances, I guess, though. So there is that um, to add to this game now. Uh, that should be okay. Uh, relatively happy with that. I really want to try, if we can, somehow get Wally on in next season, even if it is just on loan again. But I'd rather try and bring him in permanently. It's just, unfortunately, it's difficult. The reason I don't like doing loads of loan signings as well is because loan signings are great short term, but if you're trying to build something, you don't want to have too many loan signings because you're never going to be able to really go anywhere. You're just going to have to keep recycling more loan signings. Um, so I like to try and keep my signings on loan to a minimum if I can do, basically. Um, but we'll have a little look as well. Hopefully next year we can actually get some players from Stadren, because they just wouldn't give us any this year, which is a shame. Uh, right, we're all good there. We are the favourites. I would expect us to win this. They're playing a 4-4-2, and that makes me even more expectant of the win, if I'm honest. 4-4-2s generally allow all kinds of positioning threats from us Jabali's actually done okay with eight goals and five assists he's going to be leading the line for us today I want a good win over SAS Epinal and we certainly cannot afford to lose this one you know with 18 straight games unbeaten to then go and lose to the team that have just survived relegation by the skin of their teeth would be a bit shit and oh hoo -hoo. plus I'd like to get DeMarcone another clean sheet on his final game of the season for us you know to get 21 clean sheets in 34 matches would be something else I'd like to see him concede maybe under 20 goals this year Wazin go on get on that son He's, you know, he was the hero for us in that game against Colmel. Oh, we've got players bombing forward. Please look at them. He's going to lose the ball here, surely. Jabali cuts inside. Ball to the back post. And he's picked it up again. Well done, son. And Via. That's it. Just bide your time. Ojanbai, Gamiet, Wazin. Ah, shame. We did okay there. 
and that is wonderful play from Puyo nearly um, if he'd followed that ball a little bit more we might have had more of a chance oh Tuati with the ball in Chadley um, oh Ch sorry Chadili I was going to say that would be surprising Cantini Jabali Ojumbai, can he flick it across? He can't. Jabali whips it in. Bwalion, oh, he's at the post. Once again, fullbacks still getting in the box. And I love that about this system. It means that, you know, we've got all those players, but we still get our fullbacks ridiculously far forward at times. Wazin, go and have a shot. He has had a shot and it's well saved by Roban over the crossbar. That's a good start from us. I think actually having solid fullbacks with this system is probably one of the most key features of it, just to provide that width when we do need it. Wazin, Mvia, can he step inside and shoot? He will step inside, he will shoot, and it's blocked on the line, and it's put in over the line by Medi. Gene. There we go. He's only that's only his second goal this season. I feel like I've said him. I feel like I've talked about him scoring more than once, unless that was in cup games. It must have been cup games. I'm still some surprising. I feel like I've said him. Uh, then again, oh no, wait. The reason it seems familiar is because he actually scored a goal just like this um, to score his first goal for us. I think. Right. One up against SAS. 77 points, actually. As of, look at this. We could be 16 points clear of the nearest club to us, which is fantastic. And eventually 19 points clear of anyone else. And, ooh, another one here. Bwalion now. Gamiet. Oh, he's lost out, but Bwalion will pick this up. Goes back to the edge of the area for Traore, our defensive midfielder. Look how far forward he is. And Via now with the strike. If we can keep some of these guys fit next year. Bear in mind, with players like Ocean Bai, he's missed, like, half of the games this year. And obviously... That has made a huge difference for us. I feel like with him in the team, we probably would have won even more games. Although I am still surprised that we've done as well as we have this year. I never expect things to go that well in the first year of saves just because sorting out a tactic. And I think we've just stumbled on this by, not by pure luck, of course, but like it does seem somewhat fortuitous that we've actually managed to get a solid tactic so quickly. And I'm hoping that this will be the tactic that can take us all the way. Um, something really, really solid. Wazin, players overlapping, just keep the ball. And Via. He might fancy a shot himself, actually. Jabali stepping inside, goes for goal. What a strike that is from Hakim Jabali. And it's these type of situations where we just seem to run away with games. I've noticed it a lot where we're not battering teams, but if you give us that much possession and allow us to pass the ball around as freely as that and don't close us down, all it takes is one little situation like this and we've scored ourselves a goal. Jabali with his ninth league goal, or is it ninth in all competitions? I can't remember. 2-0 up after 22 minutes and hello, another goal. Maybe we can go for a record win. Jabali pulls it back for Traore, pulls it back for Mvia, goes for goal, off the crossbar, and it's in the back of the net, and that is very unlucky from the goalkeeper there. Robin's own goal, and it is Paris FC 3 now. SAS Epinal nil. Our Livecom games have been getting more and more ferocious against opponents lately. It's been fantastic. Um, you're actually seeing some of the better performances out of us. Like, we've had some occasional good ones, but the ones in the Livecom seem to have been particularly good lately, and that's pleasant, because usually I feel like it's the other way around, and it has been for a little while in some of my saves, so it's nice to, um, especially for this first season, get to show you some of these sort of games wow um is that a hat trick of assists as well from johan and Vio? did he get an assist for the shot okay that's a bit of a weird one he's got the assist for the goalkeeper's own goal he'll take it three assists for him though that's spectacular stuff perhaps there's more goals in this second half for us people like ojan bai might fancy something it's a shame without ex shergui i feel like you know we might we, with him we might have even got more in this game but hey we'll take it so far another clean sheet though is kind of optimum that's what I really want for this game, is another clean sheet. Just to sort of... Oh, that's poor. Don't let them do that. Let Robin Just let him kick it into his own net. He has that about him, it would seem. The woodwork's been hit quite a few times today as well. Uh, Traore there, and Via, And again, the ball is just mopped up so easily. And uh, we're controlling the centre of the park because we've got that extra man. And Via now. Can he pick a pass through? Wazin rolls it through for Jabali, and it's in the back of the net for 4-0. Hakim Jabali's having a lovely time today. And Wazin, I tell you what, when he's played for us in that role, he does have a great... I think his vision must be quite high because he seems to be able to pick out great little passes and get into good areas. His vision and positioning for me must be quite high. And that makes him quite useful for that role. Maybe he, next season he might get himself some more game time. He's sort of been used as more of a sort of backup this year and he's done a good job in that role. 4-0 up again at home. Uh, oh, that's poor. Lancina, don't you dare... Uh, dear, this is going to be an quite... Oh, what a block. Again, with the great defending. We really do have some incredible defenders in this club. And... I'm surprised because they don't really seem to exist very much on FM this year. And to actually see some of the tackles that our defenders have put in in games this season has been fantastic. They really do seem to be fighting for the shirt. And that's kind of the sort of... Um, the, and our goalkeeper doesn't spill balls like that. that that's another thing I've enjoyed very much. DeMarcone looks solid as a rock for us at times. Although the fact is, now that I've said that, he'll probably drop a clangor or two into the neck in the next 20 minutes and we'll have to use the soup dragon to get the bastards out. Right. Um, what changes to make? I'm thinking Bogongwe. I'm going to give him a little run out up top so I can show you guys what I'm on about with some of his play. He seems to have a good knack at getting late goals. Let's give him a run out. Um, Audrey Pai, he's not actually been that good today. So I'm going to get Kula... 
Uh, no, not what we're doing. I'm gonna get Cooley back. I'm gonna make a triple sub. Why the hell not? Uh, I'm gonna get Gamia off, and I'm gonna get Dominique Pereira on for Audrey Bay. Because why the hell not? Let's just freshen things up a little bit. Give some of these guys a little run out. Pereira looks like one for the future, me uh, for me. So he's gonna take a couple of seasons to settle in. We probably will concede now, which is a shame. But then again, we've got some quality defense. Ah. Oh. I hate that he was able to get that ball in between like three of our defenders, but the chance was there and he's taken it. 4-1. Shame that we've conceded, but I don't know if we've even made the substitutions yet. Um, no, we hadn't even made the substitutions at that point, so oh well. Um, he looks like an alright player, actually. Ball played downfield, win the header. Pu oh, what is with these? They're doing this again. They're doing this again. Ball across, Bekajani, and he's scored another one. Um, guys, come on now. Let's not get silly. Stop allowing them back into the game like that. That was poor. And again, that came from one of those stupid over-the-defender's head balls. I really hate those because they happen way too often, regardless of what level of league. It's a great finish, though. Really calm. Um, shame for DiMarcona to concede two goals like that, but I guess it's... No, I'm actually a little bit disappointed. Not in him. There's nothing he can do about it. To be 4 up and let them score twice is a little bit of a shame, but I guess we'd kind of given up the ghost at that point and we're kind of cruising in games. But we can't afford that kind of complacency next season. That is very important. That next year, you know, we're going to be fighting for our lives. It is all going to be about us just trying to do our best to stay up next year because we're going to be working on an absolute shoestring budget. I really don't even know if we're going to be a professional club next year. Um, so that could make all the difference. It's going to be about how well this tactic copes in those games. Every point and every game next season is going to be a fight to the death. Don't think we need to address anything specific. I'm sorry. I'll take that. Ah, a 4-2 win. We've still scored four more goals. We've scored 70 goals this season, which is fairly solid. By far the best defence in the league. It's a shame we conceded 20 in the end, but it's still not a bad level of defending I have to say ended up 15 points clear of Colmar who actually leapfrogged Amiens into second place in the end and uh, USBCO lost their game so they do not in fact get promoted so those two teams will be going up with us into Ligue 2 next season uh, I wonder who's going to be joining us I know that PSG did the cup and uh, league and cup double wow Red Star were getting a bit feisty weren't they Jesus Christ three players sent they were winning that game 2-0 and then they got three players sent off and then conceded four goals. I'm surprised they didn't concede more, if I'm honest. Uh, so there you go. Let's take a gander at the leagues above us as well, just so we can sort of see who's going to be where next season. Uh, so Tour are up, uh, as are Angers, and, of course, the leaders that we were talking about before. Down go all in uh, Nîmes and Cretel, who I think were all sort of the teams that kind of went up, but very, very close there. And it looks like you need a serious... Look at the amount of points they've got. 40 points! And they came bottom of the league. That is a tight-ass league. Um, so they're going to be joining... Well... We'll be joining these fellas in the league next year. Who will be coming down? Mets, Nolts, and Nancy Lor uh, and Lorient uh, are going down with slightly more modest points tallies. Uh, Stad Ren, our affiliate club, did survive, thank God, because otherwise we'd lose that. Um, PSG win the league by 19 points. Are we shocked? No, we're not. Uh, Grion Bordeaux comes second. Toulouse are in there, as well as Monaco coming fourth, which is a bit of a shock. Um, but there you go. So, yeah, PSG win the league again, and they also won the French Cup. That I do know as well. Right, let's take a quick gander at the squad. So we'll do a... Um, wow, that's the senior squad? Jesus. Right, we're going to have to do this quite quickly. Um, so we've got Puyol. Hasn't really improved, but he is 26. Eh, still, I'd like to see some improvement. Sonaya will be on his way soon as well. Uh, we've got Richard Sokoye, who, of course, is 36 now. But he, we've given him one more year just to sort of give him one last chance. Because obviously, the match fitness is low. And hopefully, if we can turn professional, we can sort that out. Uh, Traore, he's not bad. He, we could, you know, There's a lot of areas we need to improve. Obviously, there's um, Zahui Ikpo, who definitely looks like one for the future, but still only 20. Uh, Fr Frank Bakoya, again, one for the future. Rodrigue uh, Bagongui. Once again, he's 22 and he's got a little bit about him already, which is nice to see. But unfortunately, if we could, we just have no width. He's very good up top, though. And I don't know. It's, it's difficult to know with him. Boileon, I really hope we can get him on loan, at least on loan for another season. That'd be perfect. Uh, Sebastian Cantini, of course, has been fantastic at right back this year. Uh, I don't know how many assists he's got, really, but he's played 30 odd games for us. Uh, Joris Correa. He's a youngster, and again, one for the future, but he looks like he's starting to come into his own and does play in some of these positions, so we could still use him. Uh, we've got, obviously, Abdelay Koulibaly, who is a monster of a player, but still has a little bit where to go. I think he, we could still get a bit more out of him, potentially. Vincent de Marcone, he's 32, but we still need to... He's not even on a proper contract with us anymore, um, so we have to be careful there, because I don't want to lose him. As much as it says two stars, something about him for me, I just really enjoy his play. Uh, Diakabi, he'll probably be gone soon, just because he's not that good, and he keeps complaining... So, yeah. Uh, X Shergui. He's the man. The man. And he's going to be out for a little while longer for us, but I think we can get a couple more seasons out of him. As you can see, we've dropped his wages down a little bit. Or is that the previous guy? I can't remember. Uh, Gamiet is another really solid player for us. And, again, has really come a long way this year. I think he was only, like, three stars earlier. Uh, Halloween. 
he's not p- best pleased at me, but I've managed to keep him at the club. And again, that potential is the main reason. He's sort of the one I want to try and play in that role when sort of Traore or uh, Puyo are going to be out. Um, Ikebane, oh yeah, he broke his foot. He's going to be out for four months where he was at the time. So that could be dangerous, but he is still only 20 and hopefully we can come back stronger next year. Hakim Jabali, one of our first signings at this club, still has a decent amount of potential, so you never know what he could fulfill for us next season. Uh, Kante will definitely be on his way um, because... Oh, wait, no, that's a different player. Sorry, apologies. I'm thinking of a completely different type of player. There's another guy who's got a very similar name. Um, Tiokara Keita. Hmm, again, he's good, but we just need to find a way to get him into the system. Uh, Kinkela, he will be gone because... He constantly complains. He's on a huge amount of money and he just doesn't play for us. Um, Lebo, he he's important for us. And he's only 23, so he's still got some a little bit of improvement in him, potentially. Uh, wait, apologies. Oh, that's Kanate. Sorry, this is the guy that we're going to be uh, moving on because he doesn't play and he's a pain in the ass. Uh, right, Lebohi, I was going to say, centre-back, much better. Um, 31 years old, though, we may have to look into that area. Uh, Frederick Marquez, he just hasn't got enough game time, I suppose. He did score the two goals in the one game he did play for us, but I just don't know if I'd really like him that much as a player. Uh, Mervillor just hasn't got anywhere near our first team, really, because, of course, you know, I think he played in a cup game um, for us, or maybe two, actually, uh, because, obviously, we had... No, just the one. We had to rest some players. Uh, Johan and Villa... Probably one of my favourite signings that we got from those trials. And Christ and Tangu, again, still got a lot of potential and obviously is a great backup. And Ojin Bai, just fantastic. He might be 32, but I could not care less. And we've got Yasin Oazin. He's been really solid in the games he's actually played for us. Despite these stats, there's something about him I just quite like. And we're back to Loic Puyo. So, guys... In the next episode, we'll have a lot to talk about because I'm going to have to do a lot of work over the summer to try and get this squad and this team up to scratch ready for our first game in Ligue 2. Um, it's going to be a toughie. It's going to be one hell of a season. You know, we've had a great season this year with lots and lots of wins. But what I'm saying is this. Next year is going to be a much more difficult prospect and don't expect to see us winning all the time. Um, this strategy, then again, we tested ourselves against Lons and I think maybe we could surprise a few people next year and maybe not be battling entirely for relegation. Maybe just try and get ourselves into sort of lower mid-table and try and just solidify ourselves but it will depend hugely on whether our professional status is intact if we can get one that is and what kind of level of debt the club is operating at it's going to be massively important for us because that is something that we really do need to sort i'm hoping that money will flow for us a bit more comfortably next year i really hope so so guys if you like what you've seen you've enjoyed this first season at uh, Paris FC then please do drop a like on the video and if you'd like to even more than that please subscribe to my channel for more Outcaster icons and of course from the shadows in your inbox every single day at 5 30 and 8 o'clock and I will see you guys in the next episode for our first game hopefully as a professional side I'll see you guys soon bye bye <laughs>